What is up guys, welcome back to the channel, Poor Man's Guide to Building the Food Truck. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about some really cool stuff. As you can see, the cooking equipment right behind me, we're gonna be talking about that. But before we get into that guys, we're actually gonna back up a little bit and just reflect on uh, the journey so far and go over a couple of things that I feel that um, may be beneficial for one of you, uh, for one or many of you guys out there. So we're gonna to touch on those things. So before we get into it though, as always, thank you, thank you so much for the support. Recently, um, we've almost come up to a thousand subscribers. We're just over 900. So uh, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and uh, and like, share, all that good stuff because we're almost about to hit a thousand. So thank you, thank you guys so much for the support. It's been awesome. We've had a lot of comments, um, a lot of people reaching out to me, um, uh, liking the videos and uh, and you know showing their support. So uh, from, from the bottom of my heart, it really, really means a lot to me. Thank you so, oh, so, so much. As you can see, we're making a lot of progress here in the trailer and, and we're almost there. We're almost there. It's taken a long time, but we're getting there. So um, again, I know I sound like a broken record, but thank you guys so much for the support. It means a lot. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Um, maybe these videos can help you out. And uh, you know, if you have any questions, like always drop them right below. Go ahead and uh, check out our Instagram pages. Remember, our new page, Savage Tacos. We're going to be coming to Central Florida really, really soon. So make sure you check that out. That's on Instagram and Facebook. And check out the uh, Poor Man's Food Truck on TikTok, uh, Instagram, and YouTube. So without further ado, let's get into this, uh, this week's video. All right, guys. So like I said, um, we're going to start off a little bit differently on this video. I just want to back up and kind of share a few things that have been on my mind and on my chest over the last couple of videos that, uh, you know, I've been kind of deciding on whether to share it or not. And, uh, and I feel like um, it may help and it may benefit some people that are subscribed or new people to the channel. So I want to back up and just talk about, you know, the philosophy of, you know, when I first made the channel and you know you guys that have been here from the start you'll you'll know we started out with an empty shell and i talked about some of the the struggles that i'd had um during that time and you know struggles with uh, you know financially and you know personal stuff that i had going on <clears throat> and uh i'm sure there's a lot of people that are watching the channel that may be experiencing those things too so i just want to you know reach out to you guys and uh and kind of touch base and share my story uh, of the last you know sort of 18 months or so because on the videos, uh, it, it can kind of look easy, right? And it looks like everything's great, um, but it really hasn't been. Um, there's been a lot of really big challenges in my life the last 18 months, 24 months or so, um, both both personal and uh, financial. So I wanna talk about some of those things. And you know, this is just me being completely transparent because everything that you see on social media, on YouTube, online, everything looks great, right? Because you just get a small snippet of what's actually happening. But I wanna kind of broaden the picture a little bit and, and share my story a little bit with you guys over the last 18 months or however long we've been doing the trailer for now, um, because it is not easy. So <clears throat> I wanna take you back uh, probably about 12 months ago, maybe 14 months ago, a little bit before uh, last Christmas of, uh, Christmas of 2021. Um, so let me just uh, rewind a little bit. So October, November time of 2021 <clears throat> was a really, really difficult time for me. Um, and it, uh, uh, it, was, it was a lot of personal stuff to be perfectly honest with you. <clears throat> um, about six months prior to that, um, I had lost my job. Um, so my income was very restricted. Um, I was fortunate enough to be picked up by the company that, that I'm with now, which I'm really, really grateful for because this worked out great. But you know, at that time, um, things were pretty desperate. Um, I had little to no money. Um, I was doing as much as I could to get the trailer off of his feet, but it seemed like an impossible task because every penny that I was getting was first and foremost going to my son because he is my priority um, and then go into you know putting the roof over our head and food on our table <clears throat> so things were really really challenging and um, not only that but then you know we kind of fast forward six months I managed to get picked up by another company which I'm with now and uh, around October November time of last year I was having um, a divorce finalized and uh, the lawyer fees um, basically cleaned me out and I had nothing. I mean, nothing. I had to, uh, I had to sell 
um, my truck, which you guys uh, remember my, my green truck. I had to sell that. I had to scrape together every penny that I had in order to pay my lawyer fees and court fees um, so that um, <clears throat> I could get what, what I was fighting for, which was I wanted 50% custody of my son. And um, of course, um, I would never change that now because uh, I got what I was fighting for and I got my 50% custody. However, it it severely damaged me financially and obviously everything else which kind of come along with it, which includes this, this food truck build. So um, not only that, but the lawyer fees ended up going for nothing anyway because we never came to any kind of agreement and when it went to court i ended up representing myself because i didn't have money for lawyer fees so um <laughs> in, in hindsight i should have represented myself the whole time because i managed to get what i was fighting for anyway by representing myself and um you know that that christmas period was really really tough and uh I was very, very fortunate to have um, a really strong woman at my side, which you guys will have seen her actually. She has little caveat appearances every now and then. Um, and some of you have actually asked for her to show up uh, in, in a little bit more in these videos because without her, I wouldn't be where I am right now. Actually, um, at the point where the divorce was being finalized and I had these lawyer bills, I mean, my lawyer bills were north of, you know, five, $6,000. Um, <clears> I was on the verge of selling this, of selling the trailer and, uh, and giving up my dream because my son was <laughs> more important than, uh, excuse me, was more important than my dream. So <clears throat> anyway, I had a really strong one behind me. And, uh, when I was on the verge of selling this, you know, she made it absolutely adamant that I was not going to sell this. We'd figure it out another way. And, uh, we managed to scrape together the money. And, uh, like I said, I sold my truck. I sold uh, a bunch of other stuff that I didn't want to, but I had to in order to uh, to pay the lawyers, uh, which in hindsight went to waste anyway. So that's the more heartbreaking thing. But, you know, it. Uh, I just want to kind of touch base because there was a point within an 18 month period that I had lost my job. Um, wasn't sure how I was gonna pay for the roof over my head. Wasn't sure how I was gonna be able to pay for my son. Um, I had to sell everything that I owned. I had no car um, and it was just a weekly battle to try and just get by and uh, the reason I'm kind of sharing this all with you guys is because I feel like um, you guys kind of I owe, I owe it to you all because you kind of see everything that's going on and you see oh wow this guy must be doing great no uh, it's really not like that and it hasn't been like that um, until recently you know I've managed to get myself back on my feet um, I got promoted at my job so now I get um, bonuses and all that really good stuff that comes along with it which is why I've been able to do all this stuff um, in the last sort of six eight months maybe so I just wanted to share that with you all because like I said, I want to be completely transparent. And if it helps just one person who may be going through the same thing, just know that um, as long as you have a good support system, which I'm very, very lucky that I did. Like I said, I have a, I have a wonderful person by my side that really uh, helped push me through it. Uh, all my family is still back in the UK, but you know, even, even so, they were a massive, massive support system for me, my mom, my dad, my brother, my sister. They, um, they really supported me, even though they're so far away. Um, so if you guys are going through something th similar like that, <clears throat> you have to excuse me because uh, it is kind of emotional and it is challenging. Um, if you guys are going through something like that, just know that there is light at the end of the tunnel uh, and you can do it. Um, you just got to really, really focus and make it happen any way you can. So we're almost there and we went through all those challenges over the last 18 months. Uh, and we're still here so if I can do it you guys can do it so like I said you know the last uh, 18 months have been very humbling for me because um, just to kind of wrap up my little spiel here um, when I lost my job you know I was working whatever I could um, I was sun up to sundown doing DoorDash doing Uber Eats you know um, after I sold my truck I was driving just the 
a pile of junk. I was it was a I was driving a 1994 Toyota Corolla with like 250,000 miles on it. It was falling apart. It was unsafe. Um, but I was doing everything that I could first and foremost to, to take care of my son um, and then to take care of just my basic necessities so whatever you guys got to do like I said there's there's no shame in, in going and, and, and doing Uber Eats, DoorDash that's what I was doing uh, whenever I got out of my job when I finally did get picked up on my job but I was still in a hole you know I would finish my job at 5 6 p.m. and I would go straight and I would work from 6 p.m. till 1 2 in the morning on the weekends delivering food uh, to people and uh, you know looking for generosity from others you know good tips um, to try and just make it work so um, I've been there and if you guys are there right now um, I know how it is and it is really really tough but you just got to do what you got to do um, to make it work so anyway enough of the uh, the heartbreak stories and all that kind of stuff let's get into what you guys are really here for which is the cooking equipment let's go all right guys so first thing that we got to do is excuse the mess because we have all of our cooking equipment off of the tables um on the ground over there obviously <clears throat> so the first thing we got to do is cut the legs off of these tables so that we can drop the cooking equipment to the appropriate height um once that cooking equipment is up there as it is it sits way too high so you're kind of cooking um with your arms like way above your head so we're going to make sure that we drop this it's probably going to be somewhere around six to eight inches i'm going to do the measurements and stuff now but we're going to cut the legs off these tables um and then before we obviously bolt anything to the ground we'll make sure we have the right height <clears throat> we can move that bottom shelf up if we need to so that way everything from the fridge all the way across is kind of the same height and it's easy to cook with so that's the first step that we're going to be doing we're going to be just using a uh, angle grinder uh, which we have used throughout the build to cut each of these legs <clears throat> make sure that they're all level before they go back in the truck and then we can reinstall all our cooking equipment back up onto the tables so let's go ahead and get that done so now we've got those two tables in guys you can see there's a much uh, better gap between the surface of the table and the hood which means once we get this equipment back on this table, we should be looking much, much better. Um, with these tables, the legs are adjustable. So those little kind of gray plastic things on the legs, they come out and you can um, swivel them up and down to get the, the level that you want. Um, just remember as well, uh, I cut mine at 10 inches knowing that the flange feet are gonna add a couple more inches to it. So it's actually gonna raise up even more. So just bear that in mind, of course, the legs uh, at the bottom add you a couple of inches the flange feet are going to add you a couple of inches so that gives yourself a little bit um, of wiggle room as well before you go ahead and make your cuts and put your equipment back onto the table so we're going to go ahead and get this back up there and then we see kind of see what it looks like all right so let's start off with our prep fridge i bought the prep fridge from webstrom and it is made by avantco as you can see, it is brand new. Um, for the longest time, I was kind of tossing up whether to go and get a used one, um, but used ones, uh, this is a 48 inch, by the way, 48 inch prep table. Used ones were running around eight, $900, something like that on Facebook Marketplace and just other places that you can find used equipment. Um, some were even more than that. Um, this one was actually on sale at Webstaurant. Uh, regular price was 1900 or right around there, but I managed to pick it up for 1500. I don't know if they still have that sale going on, but that's what I purchased it for. And uh, I just wanted the peace of mind, to be honest with you, to have a brand new unit, comes with a warranty. Um, and you know, I, I already know that I'm the first owner i don't know what is obviously if you buy a used one you don't know what it's been through or how many hours it's been run for so i just didn't want to run that risk i'd rather i, I said to myself i'd rather save up a little bit more pay the extra six seven hundred dollars what it, whatever it is and get a brand new unit so what i'm gonna do is just go ahead and turn this uh, on for you guys let's see there she goes as you can see all brand new nice and shiny and I've ran it a couple of times already and it takes I mean minutes to cool down it does have a temperature gauge inside as well and uh, of course I'll leave a link in the description for this unit and every other piece of equipment that we're going to talk about I'll leave it all in the description so you guys can check it out but I'm gonna leave it running just while we talk about the other stuff and I'll show you guys how quickly it gets down to temperature Next stop is going to be the food warmer, which you can see right behind me here. Mine is made by Viver, and you guys know that I've used uh, Viver for 
a bunch of the stuff throughout the build, the hood, the windows. Um, I actually really like their product and I think that for the price, I think they're really, really high quality. So this is a, this is a four pan uh, food warmer, as you can see. I actually, I, originally I wanted to do a six pan just to have the extra space, but it was just too big. It was gonna be too, too much space. So this one right here cost 130 bucks. Uh, which I think is a really good price too. So um, you guys can see, I actually haven't even used it yet. I haven't put any water in it or anything like that and actually tested it. So uh, I'll post an update on that and show you guys uh, what I actually think of it after after its use. But that's what I use for my food warmer, 130 bucks. I'll leave a link in the description. And the main event, this is what you guys are of course really here for, which is my actual cooking equipment. So let's go over it each one at a time. We have a 24 inch, uh, griddle which is made by Avanco again purchased from Websterant comes with free delivery um, this was right around $530 uh, this was actually donated to me by my uncle who I've mentioned a few times before and uh, he actually was the one that purchased this for me so my uncle Tone big shout out to him uh, he runs Lawrence Caterers back in the UK so big shout out to Lawrence UK if you guys are in the UK watching and you need catering, anything like that, my uncle is the guy to go to, Lawrence Catering, based in Gloucester, United Kingdom. Thank you to my uncle um, because this is uh, a really, really, really big uh, part of my food truck and, and he was the one that donated to me. So thank you, thank you so much to my Uncle Tone. Uh, next along, you can see we have a 24 inch char broiler. Again, made by Banco. This was another $450, I want to say, in that kind of ballpark. Again, I'm going to leave the links in the description. You have to excuse me because my memory is not what it used to be. So I can't quite remember to the dollar how much these were. But it's right around that sort of ballpark. Um, and then finally on the end, we have a two burner hot plate, which you guys can see right there. This is made by CPG Cooking Performance Group. Everything that you see here was purchased from Websteron. Came with a free delivery. Delivery service was great as well, actually. Um, it came, the, the griddle came within, I wanna say four to five days, char broiler and a hot plate, they came within two to three days. So it was really, really quick. Um, at least here in Florida, it was shipped by Southern Freight Liners. I wanna say something like that, um, but really, really great experience. Uh, again, free delivery, which is massive, um, but that is the cooking equipment. So the plan is gonna be on the hot plate, we're gonna be using, sorry, on the two burner hot plate over there, we're gonna be using that to, to basically cook our rice and beans. Um, the char broiler is gonna to be to cook our meat. That's gonna be really, really important. And what I found is, at least testing at home, is the meat just has such a nice flavor when it has that nice char on it, those char lines, whether it's chicken, steak, doesn't matter what it is. To cook the steak on here and cook the chicken and the pork and stuff on here, I think it's gonna be really, really beneficial uh, for my customers. And then finally, we have our 24 inch uh, griddle, which that's gonna be, you know, where we're assembling the tacos and the burritos, put everything together like that. Now, I wish I could have had a, a bigger griddle, to be perfectly honest with you, because 24 inches is, is okay, but I would have rather had a 36 inch, but I just didn't have the space because my hood is only six feet. Remember, if you're in the state of Florida, in my area at least, you've gotta have six inches of space either side of your cooking equipment. So I was only permitted to have five feet of cooking space. So I've got 24, 24, and 12. That's all I'm allowed to have. Now, if you guys have a bigger hood, maybe you can use some bigger equipment. This is great for you, um, but that's all I was permitted. And I think this is gonna do the job just fine. So uh, that is my cooking equipment, guys. Okay, just coming back to the fridge because I wanted to show you guys how quickly it gets down to temperature. So it's been on for about four minutes, maybe four and a half minutes, and it is already, I mean, you guys obviously can't feel it, but you can kind of see the, the condensation starting to build. It's already pretty cold and it's getting down to temperature. And then beneath the actual temperature gauges on the back, so I can't show it to you guys, but it does get down to temperature really, really fast. Usually 10 minutes in, it's ready to go so uh, I wanted to show that to you guys real quick and it's really really nice I like how clean it is it's got the nice big cooktop is where we're gonna have all of our fresh pico de gallo uh, guac all of our vegetables and everything like that's gonna be nice and cold in here ready to go nice to assemble right here on this chopping board so uh, if you guys like it check it out it's gonna be in the comments uh, let's go ahead and uh, 
wrap this puppy up. And just to touch on the actual layout of the cooking equipment and why I decided to go with um, how it is. So the biggest thing is obviously this so restricted for space in here, especially now we're getting more and more equipment in here. There's so little room that you gotta have everything in sequence and it's gotta make sense. So for me at least, I know that I'm gonna be assembling everything on my, on my griddle, filling it here with meat and then just finishing off everything with whatever the customer likes right here in my fridge. And as I turn around, boom, I have my serving window right behind me. So it just kind of makes sense to go, you know, boom, 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 and then boom. We can serve everything in sequence. You don't want to be bouncing from here, back here, to here, and then back over there. So I try to lay it out however it made sense to me because my rice and beans I'm going to keep over there on that hot plate. My meats are going to be cooking, you know, periodically, however, you know, depending on how busy I am. But the biggest thing was having my griddle next to my uh, food warmer and then my prep fridge so that it can just be one, two, three, and then serve. So um, think about that as you guys are going through your layout. That's just what works for me. Um, you, maybe for you guys it's going to be different, but that's just something to, uh, to consider. And then finally, guys, the gas lines. I know you guys have been waiting for the gas lines. I will be doing those myself. However, I'm not going to be posting um, the sort of, you know, how I've done them uh, because, well, two reasons. One, I'm not a professional, as you guys know. And two, it's such a crucial part of the build in terms of health and safety that I wouldn't want to portray anything which may be incorrect or whatever. Just know that after I uh, completely do mine myself, I will be having a professional um, come and inspect it in my local area. So um, just know that uh, that's something that I'm not gonna mess around with because it is a fuel source, it's liquid propane, and I don't wanna do anything wrong with that <laughs> because it can literally blow up so we don't want that so i'm going to be assembling everything myself i'm going to be following frank baltieris's videos as i have done throughout my whole build so if you guys need advice or or, or um, guidance on that i would definitely urge you to check out frank baltieris of rolling burritos food truck check him out on youtube because he's done multiple videos on the propane lines and then i would also urge you if you are doing it yourself to please afterwards have a professional inspect it because um, you know, if plumbing goes wrong, I mean, it's okay, it's just water. Um, it, but if the electrical and the, um, the propane lines are not done up to code or not done correctly, that could just be a disaster waiting to happen. So um, again, please take that with a grain of salt. Whenever I do mine, I will be having it inspected by a professional. So I just wanted to add that in there for you guys, but it will be coming very soon. One more thing I forgot about the cooking equipment, my tables. So as you can see guys, I have uh, two tables right here. They are NSF rated. Uh, I picked those up on Amazon and I actually only paid $140 each for these two tables. They are um, 48 by 30, so 30 inches deep, 48 inches wide. Uh, I will leave a link in the description for you. There was a coupon when I actually purchased them from Amazon. Whether they have that still or not, I don't know, but I will leave it in the description for you. Um, these are rated to each hold, I think it's 500 pounds. Maybe it's 450. I'm not 100% sure, but it does say on the Amazon website. I will leave in the description for you. Um, these two right here, both together, cost me $280 and some change, something like that. So I just wanted to add that in there because I knew I forgot something. And as always, guys, thank you so much uh, for watching today. Uh, go ahead and check out all of our social media pages. Check out Savage Tacos on Facebook and Instagram. And also, of course, check out Poor Man's Food Truck, TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. So if you guys have any questions, please leave them right below. Everything that you've seen for my cooking equipment, I will leave it in the description for you. Please feel free to, to reach out. I will happily respond to you myself. And until next time, guys, thanks very much.